we're still uh, plodding on with these 1970 albums. It certainly was an impressive year. I'm going to do my second episode looking at blues rock. Uh, and uh, I think maybe three or four offerings on this. Uh, so let's press on. And the first one uh, that I want to cover is an album called Cricklewood Green. It's by a British bass band 10 years after. Um, this was a year on from their extremely impressive Shh uh, from 1969, an album that I absolutely adore. I listen to it frequently. I just can't get enough of Alvin Lee's guitar work. Cricklewood was a bit more conservative, safer really, uh, and a little bit M.O.R., but it's not without its high points. He's uh, dabbled in the synths a little bit here, does Alvin. Uh, experimenting uh, and Churchill of course chips in uh, a little uh, which gives a sort of prog feel uh, to the blues uh, so I'm going to go through the uh, tracks now with Sugar the Road it's got a spacey intro very blues rocky uh, standard combines that growling Alvin vocal with L L L Leon Leon Lion's bass, which is very prominent, very distinctive on tenures, uh, is Leo Lion. Speedy solo midway through, working on the road is track two. It's a more pacey, co pacey cosmic rock uh, sound, bit post Woodstock really. Dazzling short solo again, puts it uh, up on a more satisfying pedestal and it's got a solid riff. Uh, track three is 50,000 Miles Beneath My Brain. Typifying prog, ross, prog blues, I felt. Builds up slowly, synths more prominent, and Alvin's vocal full of passion. Uh, it's a great number, really, and Leon's bass ripples uh, throughout. It's a seven-minute-plus effort, and certainly uh, quite uh, good. Tour de Force, one crit critic described it, as slow, soft shuffle to an all-out roaring thunderstorm. I'm not sure that it's that, but it is pretty impressive. 3000 Blues, it's got a bit of a country honk adventure to this with some frantic acoustic picking by Alvin. He was a very, very adept uh, acoustic guitar player. Next up is Me and My Baby. This is a very standard traditional blues with uh, Whedon style guitar solos. If you know who he is, Burt Whedon. A uh, very famous guitar player in the uh, late 50s, early 60s. Also some funky organ here. And there's a few ad, uh, jazz, jazz touches added here for the mood. And then we get to the high point of the album. Uh, this track I was very, very familiar with. It's Love Like a Man. There's a couple of versions of this. It was a short a single, an extended single, and then, of course, this album uh, version, which is extended. Uh, it was a minor hit, and that's how I came across it. Uh, it's a guitar solo lover's dream. Great hook, vocals are a killer, and the rhythm is tight as your ass. And, of course, the solo is absolutely five-star. Circles is next up. Gentle melodic folk blues, really, with sparing keyboards. A nice acoustic guitar, though. And then to the closer, uh, As the Sun Still Burns Away. It's a very slow blues closer. Uh, typical build-up to the solo, expansive uh, guitar. It's got quite a dark mood, this. And uh, it wasn't a very long LP. That's why I've managed to get it through it so swiftly. So that's uh, Cricklewood Green. Released in 1970 by 10 Years After. Offering on this uh, Blues Episode 2 is an album that I have to uh, confess I really didn't uh, find in 1970. Only recently found it really and I'm bloody very pleased that I did. It's by B.B. King. It's called Indianola Mississippi Seeds. It's his 18th solo album. Uh, and on this one he was joined with... Uh, a, a, a small star cast including Carol King, Joe Walsh, a Leon Russell and a great rhythm band with Russ Kunkel on drums 
how you will hear him uh, when you get to listen to it. Uh, it's regarded as one of BB's best pop flavoured blues albums, very critically acclaimed, and for some, the most highly regarded blues crossover album uh, that he released. And it's a homage to his own town, and significantly, BB himself considers it as its best solo album. So I better get on and look at the tracks. I have to say, I put this on earlier today, and it was absolutely serene. Uh, track one, Nobody Loves Me But My Mother. It's a very short uh, intro with BB on piano. He hums the song to you, and you can taste the blues in his uh, feel. Uh, it segues into uh, uh, Lucille, of course, if you don't know who Lucille is, it's the name of his guitar. And the story that I really tickled me was when he travelled uh, by plane, he used to book two seats, one for him and one for the guitar. True story. Anyway, uh, we move on to track two, You're Still My Woman. Uh, six minutes and as solos go, uh, BB's is as beautiful as they come. This is classy. It's got some sumptuous strings and Carol King on piano. Ask Me No Questions is a standard blues up-tempo song with funky piano by Leon Russell, and Joe Wolf chips in uh, on rhythm guitar. Until I'm Dead and Cold, a slow blues again with King on piano, it's heartwarming, and there's some added horns that put a few more notches onto the passion uh, that you're listening to. King's special is great as well. A shuffling beat with BB's trading moves and Russell's piano. Uh, it's an instrumental, one of the best rock filled blues pieces on the album. And next up is Ain't Gonna Worry My Life Anymore. The strings uh, lush here stir the shakes on this one. Uh, I mean, your shakes. Delicate, intricate guitar by BB throughout. It really swings and the production is great. The instrument separation, perfect on the speakers. Ancient Things is up next. Uh, another five minute, beautifully crafted solos. Uh, and uh, Louise really can sing, you know. Orchestral uh, arrangements. Carol King on piano. It's a tale of life's woes. Uh, and the music creates a mood that's appropriate. Uh, we're getting near the conclusion now. Go underground. This is very standard 12-bar blues, uh, but uh, guesting on organ, on piano rather, is Paul Harris, a name that caught my eye because he was in the Manassas band with Stephen Stills. Uh, it's smooth as silk guitar as usual. What a legend this man was. And we close out with uh, Leon Russell's Hummingbird an effortless closer where Baby's vocals take centre stage alongside with the gospel uh, uh, singers. So, in conclusion, this is a lost masterpiece as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I do like B.B. King, but uh, under underplayed. But I hope I can get around to listening to this on a regular basics because uh, this is as good as it gets when it comes to blues music so the title again indianola mississippi seeds and it's by the late great baby king get to listen to it it's a gem offering then this is the third album by the british band humble pie uh if you don't know much about how hum humble pie uh, they were led by two giants really in the british uh rock uh music scene uh, in the late 60s, early 70s. Stevie Marriott, who previously was with The Small Faces, and Peter Frampton, uh, who, who turned up on uh, other albums uh, uh, before uh, getting to Humble Pie and then going solo and becoming a superstar. Uh, this album alternates hard-driving blues rockers with country folk-style numbers uh, transitioning to heavier things. Uh, Frampton is on the gentle. Frampton writes on the gentler numbers. Oh, Marriotts are more heavier. 
Uh, and so uh, we're going to go through a very brisk uh, track uh, uh, appreciation. Uh, so stay tuned. Me starts us off. It's nearly eight minutes. Steve is on organ and he eases us into a bluesy, uh, solid song with Frank, Frankton's guitar, a real cruncher. Very moody vocals, though, by Marriott. Only a Roach, written by Shirley. Uh, he's the drummer. Uh, a country honk song, really. Tongue in Cheek by B.J. Cole, guesting on steel guitar. One-Eyed Trouser Snake Rumba, which is a band composition, is a rock-on uh, type of song uh, with double rock uh, guitars and duo Vo duo vocals it's very much a team effort but some crisp guitar work again by Frampton Earth and Water song written by Frampton this is a sweet uh, acoustic song uh, very romantic the, the lyrics are a little bit corny it has to be said uh, and then we get to I'm Ready uh, this is a traditional song written by Willie Dixon and Marriott Let's Loose vocally uh, on this uh, blues with able support from Frampton. It's loose, it's dirty, there's some neat interplay between the two, two guitarists and you get what you want. Theme from Skint, See You Later, Liquidator, a Marriott song. It's got a country blues acoustic driven uh, uh, intro and Colf is featured again Marriott's vocals re replay reality for the band uh, uh, and it's got a certain uh, nod to the Rolling Stones uh, and I thought uh, maybe early John Cougar Mellencamp. Red, Red Light Mama, Red Hot, again a team effort, lyrics by Marriott. It's a fiery song with Steve uh, uh, great on the vocals. Uh, it's got a live feel to it, uh, a real rocker with a touch of harmonica as the jam takes off. Uh, it highlights Shirley's prolific drumming. And then Sucking on the Sweet Vine, this is uh, uh, bass player Greg Ridley's composition. Uh, a mellower blues, uh, Ridley sings. Uh, it's got a more country acoustic feel to it, but it still rouses its eye. With a, a, a psychedelic uh, moment as it closes. So we've got the uh, uh, members of the band. There will be a slide. This is a half decent album. Uh, not brilliant, but certainly worth listening to. It's the third album by Humble Pie, uh, titled Humble Pie. And that's it. We're on this uh, episode two, Climax Blues Band. And this album's entitled A Lot of Bottle. Uh, now, this is a band that I saw a lot at this time in my life, through 69 to 72. They played the local circle, circuit of clubs, uh, pubs and other small venues, and I got to see them on a regular basis. They were formed in Stafford in 1968, uh, and that was at the sort of end of the British blues boom, uh, which brought us bands like Fleetwood Mac and Sour Boy Brown and Chicken Shack. Uh, there's a slide uh, for the band members, but significantly uh, the bass player, Derek Holt, was uh, quite impactful. And of course their guitar player was one Peter Haycock, uh, who sang vocals and played guitar and slide guitar. Uh, and he went on to make some pretty uh, uh, tasty solo albums as well. Uh, what they are, are they're about? Well, they're electric blues rock outfit, and uh, they managed to uh, uh, release uh, over a dozen LPs. Uh, but the style was very much very similar throughout. They weren't particularly adventurous, but their style, well, they got the job done basically. Uh, and as I say, that sort of blues rock sound was very indicative. Uh, and uh, I saw them. Uh, a number of times at a venue that I've mentioned to before, the Mad Gym Mill Club in uh, Godalming. And this was a small club which held about 200 people where I saw uh, the likes of Black Sabbath, a Genesis and Free, uh, a, an iconic venue. 
Look at the tracks, uh, the opener's country hat. This is uh, an acoustic blues played by Haycock. It was very, very popular on their live set, and I remember it uh, vividly. Uh, Reap What I've Sowed has some scintillating slide by Haycock and thudding bass by Bolt. Holt. Sorry. Uh, and then uh, Seventh Son, which is, uh, I think, track six on the second side. Uh, this is a cover of the Willie Dixon song, uh, and it's uh, it's iconic, really. Slow vocal begins to uh, explode into a fast blues riff. Again, frequently played live, and I loved it. Uh, there's some occasional horns that seep in as well. Uh, Louisiana Blues, uh, towards the end, is uh, written by Muddy Waters. Uh, it's a great rendition of his classic with the guitar and harmonica sharing the superlatives. And then for Cut, Cut your, You Loose closes Blue Shuffle with neat vocals. Uh, I've only really played lip service to that, uh, but I thought I'd uh, just slot it in. So that's about it. That's the blues. That's episode two. Another four reviews. Uh, there will be links to these albums on YouTube for the music. Uh, and do get along listening to them.